this video, we're going to cover L'Hopital's rule. This is a specific rule that applies only to quantities which give zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Absolutely nothing else. Not zero times infinity, not infinity minus infinity. Absolutely only zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Here's what L'Hopital's rule says. If you're evaluating a limit and the limit of the top goes to zero and the limit of the bottom also goes to zero, or in the second case, the limit of the top goes to infinity and the limit of the bottom goes to infinity, only in those two cases. What you can do is just take the numerator and take its derivative, just take the denominator and take its derivative. Notice that when we take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, this is not normally allowed. This is a special rule that applies only to zero over zero or infinity over infinity type of undefined quantities. So this should seem like really mysterious to you. Like why the heck would that work? I want to give you a little proof. You're not responsible for reproducing this proof, but I want to show you because it actually helps you to understand why L'Hopital's rule is true. This is a rough sketch. This is not a totally rigorous proof. Let's suppose that you're taking the limit of f of x divided by g of x as x approaches a. And let's just talk about the zero over zero case. So we're talking about the scenario where the function goes to zero in the numerator and also goes to zero in the denominator. What I'm going to just assume here, because I'm just doing a rough sketch, is let's just assume that f of x and g of x are continuous functions. So if x approaches a, then f of x approaches f of a. So f of a is equal to zero and g of a is also equal to zero. What that means is that I can just add them into the equation with no effect because it's equal to zero here and this one is also equal to zero. Now what we can do is just divide by x minus a in the numerator and divide by x minus a in the denominator. That looks really familiar. f of x minus f of a over x minus a. That's the derivative formula. G of x minus g of a over x minus a. That's the derivative formula, right? Okay, so what we get is the derivative on the top and the derivative on the bottom. Pretty cool, right? The proof when f of x goes to infinity and g of x goes to infinity is, a, is more detailed and I'm not going to cover it here because it's just too much for this class. But there you go. This is just a little rough sketch about why L'Hopital's rule is true. So I hope you think that that is pretty neat. That is the end of our little mini proof. Okay, so let's do some examples here. Remember these problems when we have x goes to infinity and the degree on top is equal to the degree on the bottom, we already know that the answer here is one fourth because we had a rule for that where if the degree matches in the numerator and the denominator, you just use the coefficients. Okay, we also use the divide by highest power trick, but in any case, it, the answer is one fourth. But let's just test out L'Hopital's rule and see that we can actually get the same answer using L'Hopital's rule. As you can see here, if x goes to infinity, the numerator approaches infinity and also the denominator approaches infinity. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. We are going to take the derivative of top function, which is 2x plus 0, divided by the derivative of the bottom function, which is 8x plus 0. Don't forget in these problems that you should simplify. Don't just blindly apply L'Hopital's rule over and over again. Actually look at what you have. We have 2x over 8x. 2x over 8x, the x's cancel and 2 over 8 gives me 1 fourth. So the answer is 1 fourth. Wow, isn't that really cool? That is exactly the same thing that we would get if we just noticed that the powers were equal and we can get the coefficients, which would give us one fourth. Okay, L'Hopital's rule gives us the exact same thing. That's how mathematics works. If you have two different ways of doing something, they better give you the same answer. Let's do another one. Remember that we have this rule that if x goes to infinity and you have a higher degree polynomial in the denominator, you get zero. And if you have a higher degree polynomial in the numerator, you'll get infinity. Try it out. These both give infinity over infinity. So L'Hopital's rule is valid for both example two and example three. Try it out. See if you can do it by yourself and see if you can get equals zero for this one and equals infinity for this one using L'Hopital's rule. Okay, I'm going to do one that's slightly more interesting. We've got x cubed times e to the negative x squared as x approaches infinity. Let's check this out here. If x goes to infinity, x cubed goes to infinity. If x goes to infinity, e to the negative infinity power, remember the graph of e to the x, e to the negative infinity power goes to zero. That is definitely an undefined quantity of infinity times zero, but unfortunately it's not the correct thing for L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule only, only, only applies to zero over zero and infinity over infinity. We have infinity times zero. What we're going to do is just a little bit of algebra. Remember that if you have a negative power, that means that it's in the denominator. Okay, now it's a quotient.
constant. Now I have a numerator and a denominator. Let's see what happens. If x goes to infinity, x cubed goes to infinity. If x goes to infinity, now that it's in the denominator, that negative power has disappeared because it's in the denominator. e to the infinity power goes to infinity. Okay, now I do have infinity over infinity. So this little algebra of using that negative power in order to write it in the denominator, that is so, so crucial because that's the only way we're gonna get infinity over infinity and that's a scenario where L'Hopital's rule actually does apply. Let's do L'Hopital's rule. We are gonna take the derivative of the top and get 3x squared. The derivative of the bottom piece, of course, this is the chain rule where the e is the outside function. The x squared just gets copied down and then you multiply times the derivative of x squared. Always take derivatives according to the correct rules. We're not gonna reevaluate this limit as x goes to infinity like quite yet. Just, just like look at this thing. There's x squared on the top and there's x on the bottom. Before we do anything else, let's just do the logical thing and simplify this. Now we have 3x in the numerator and e to the x squared in the denominator. As you can see, unfortunately, this like still gives us infinity over infinity. Okay, no problem. You can apply L'Hopital's rule multiple times if you're getting infinity over infinity again and again. Luckily, it's only two times in the problem. Okay, so let's do it again. The derivative of the numerator gives us three and the derivative of the denominator, the remember when numbers are multiplied, they just get copied down. So this two just gets copied down right here. And we've got the derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times two x. Now checking out what happens, the numerator approaches three and the denominator approaches infinity. Okay, three over infinity goes to zero. So the final answer is zero. And I wanna remind you of a basic algebra fact, which is that if I have a fraction in the denominator, that is the same thing as flipping the fraction over and multiplying. So a divided by one over b is the same as a times b over one. Of course, dividing by one, you don't have to write that down. You can just say a times b, okay? We're gonna use this little algebra fact backwards. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some quantity that's in our problem, which is like some like function of x multiplied times another function of x. Let's just say that b is like the easier function. It's like the simpler function. We're gonna write b as divided by one over b. As you can see, these two quantities are exactly the same thing as each other, but what we're gonna be doing is like forcing L'Hopital's rule to hold. If we have some quantity that's zero times infinity, L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply to zero times infinity. Only zero over zero and infinity over infinity. So what this little algebra thing is allowing us to do is rewrite a product as a quotient. And then maybe we actually can apply L'Hopital's rule to the quotient. Okay, so here we go. We got an example, x squared times ln of x, where x approaches zero from the right. Remember that you cannot take the ln of a negative number. That's why x is approaching zero from the right because ln of a negative number doesn't make sense. Let's check out what's happening here. X is approaching zero, so x squared approaches zero. Remember the graph of the ln function looks something like this. If the x values are approaching zero from the right, what happens is that the ln function has a vertical asymptote and the actual height of the function goes down to negative infinity. So here, what we're getting is zero times negative infinity. L'Hopital's rule doesn't apply to that. This is not L'Hopital's rule. We have to actually do some algebra in order to force L'Hopital's rule to apply to this problem. Of course, zero times infinity is an undefined quantity, but not one of the undefined quantities that L'Hopital's rule applies for. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take the ln and write that in the numerator. That's basically unchanged. Ln gives me ln. The real thing that's happening here is that the x squared is being written as one over one over x squared. This is like a reciprocal that's undoing a reciprocal. Remember, if I have one over x squared in the denominator, that is the same exact thing as just multiplying times x squared because you flip the fraction over. So the reason why I did it with x squared and not ln is because x squared is the simpler function. Always put the in to the denominator, whatever is the simpler function. Otherwise you'll make things like more complicated than they need to be. Now let's reevaluate where the limit is going. Now as x approaches zero from the right, ln of x, like we just talked about a minute ago, approaches negative infinity because ln has a vertical asymptote as x approaches zero from the right. Now that the one over x squared is in the denominator, we can kind of put it in parentheses and deal with it like one big denominator. The denominator here is essentially 
giving us one as x approaches zero, giving us one over zero, which goes to infinity. Oh, now L'Hopital's rule applies. This little algebra trick of taking a quantity and writing that quantity as one over it in the denominator can help us in order to force L'Hopital's rule to apply to our problem. Okay, we are going to take the derivative of ln of x in order to get one over x. Then we're going to take the derivative of the bottom in order to get minus two over x cubed. We can simplify this. So let's flip the fraction. We got a fraction divided by a fraction. We flip over the x cubed over negative two. Simplify, simplify until you have something that cannot be simplified anymore. We get x squared over negative two and x approaches zero. So we've got zero over negative two and the final answer is zero.